The human mind is extraordinary, and it's fallible. Welcome to Outsmarting Human Minds, a media series devoted to understanding the mind to make better decisions in life and at work. The following is a modified version of Can Women Be Biased Against Other Women? An article in our series, How Can This Be? Read the article at outsmartinghumanminds.org. Imagine hearing this. Alex is biased against women. Most of us hearing something like this would assume that Alex is a man. But the science tells us we should think again. That our hypothetical Alex is just as likely to be Alexandra as Alexander. How can this be? Here's the finding. Corinne Mosrakusen and her colleagues at Yale asked over 100 biology, chemistry, and physics professors nationwide to evaluate an application for a laboratory manager position. Everyone received the same application materials, but half of them believed they were evaluating John, the other half of the faculty believed they were evaluating Jennifer. Here's what they found. One, despite having an identical resume, John emerged as the more desirable candidate. He was seen as more competent, deserving of more mentoring, and worth 14% more in starting salary. Two, female faculty showed this male favoring bias to the same extent as the male faculty. Why? The science suggests that we see a difference between men's and women's work, even when no such difference exists. Even in Sweden, the world's leader in gender equality, women applying for postdoctoral fellowships had to be twice as productive as men to be seen as equally competent. This pattern emerges again and again, regardless of whether we look at recommendation letters for real faculty applications for US medical schools or competence ratings for hypothetical employees. This isn't because we don't like women. In fact, work by Alice Eagley and collaborators shows just the opposite. Women are actually viewed more positively than men. We see them as warm, nurturing, communal, and kind. After all, think woman, and mother is among the first concepts that spontaneously spring to mind. Even in the Moss study described above, researchers found that Jennifer was better liked than John was. The bias we see in the data has nothing to do with likability. It has to do with competence. The fact is, we seem to divide the world into groups that are warm, trustworthy, kind, and nurturing, and groups that are competent, strong, brilliant leader. Decades of work by psychologist Susan Fisk has shown that entrenched in our thinking is the belief that groups cannot be both. That means that while our beliefs about men and women have changed and are changing all the time, we still carry the idea that these two groups differ in their most essential traits. Mother versus provider, virtuous versus virtuoso. These implicit stereotypes exist in our minds regardless of our own gender or social group, simply because we have seen countless depictions over the course of our lives of what a scientist, nurse, CEO, or prodigy looks like. These automatic associations likely underlie why 83% of children asked to draw a scientist draw a man, and why even women in science discount Jennifer as a laboratory manager. The question that looms large in the face of this data is this. If implicit stereotypes about competence and gender are shifting how we evaluate men's and women's work, what can we do about it? Let's think about how to outsmart our minds. It's tempting to point our fingers at the Johns of the world, but don't assume that gender bias is itself gendered. We can all be carriers of the stereotype that women are warm, but men are brilliant, regardless of what we consciously believe. Next, be proactive. We may not be aware of our bias, so find ways to take it out of the equation. Try removing gendered information from resumes. Be transparent about what benchmarks you're using to evaluate success, and hold yourself accountable by using physical checklists or encouraging others to keep you in check. Finally, challenge your intuitions. If you find yourself thinking her application just isn't as strong as his, ask yourself a simple question. Based on what? Compare candidates side by side, apply the same benchmarks, and see if your beliefs still hold. 
Outsmarting Human Minds is a program founded by Mazarin Banaji, devoted to improving decision-making using insights from psychological science. This article was written by Olivia Kang, Kirsten Morehouse, and Mazarin Banaji. Sound editing and mixing was done by Evan Younger. Music was composed by Miracles of Modern Science. Support for Outsmarting Human Minds comes from PwC, Johnson & Johnson, and Harvard University. For references and related materials, go to outsmartinghumanminds.org. Thank you.